Chapter 10 of Rebel with the Cause, Mark Twain's Hidden Memoirs. Death Sentence for Awkwardness, 1846. Now I want to return to the account of the slave who was killed for a trifling lapse of some sort, which I witnessed there in Hannibal when I was just 10 years old. I must divest myself of this or disgorge it as it were because this scene bothers me even more than any of the others and should be related in more detail than the mere passing glance it was previously given. The terrible event, which I have not been able to unremember, was this. I saw a man angrily hurl a large rock at a slave for merely doing something slowly or awkwardly. Upon being struck, the slave instantly dropped to the ground without having made a sound and he never made another one he never spoke again nor did he get up again for he had died editor's notes twain had vividly recalled this incident a half century after its occurrence something he saw in india reminded him of it and conjured up mental images of his boyhood in hannibal this is recorded in chapter 38 of Following the Equator, where he recounts witnessing the white manager of a hotel there in 1896, suddenly cuff one of his Indian employees across the face and loudly scold him. There was a vast glazed door which opened upon the balcony. It needed closing or cleaning or something. And a native got down on his knees and went to work at it. He seemed to be doing it well enough but perhaps he wasn't, for the burly German put on a look that betrayed dissatisfaction, then, without explaining what was wrong, gave the native a brisk cuff on the jaw and then told him where the defect was. It seemed such a shame to do that before us all. The native took it with meekness, saying nothing, and not showing in his face or manner any resentment. I had not seen the like of this for 50 years. It carried me back to my boyhood and flashed upon me the forgotten fact that this was the usual way of explaining one's desires to a slave. I was able to remember that the method seemed right and natural to me in those days, I being born to it and unaware that elsewhere there were other methods. But I was also able to remember that those unresented cuffings made me sorry for the victim and ashamed for the punisher. My father was a refined and kindly gentleman, very grave, rather austere, of rigid probity, a sternly just and upright man, albeit he attended no church and never spoke of religious matters, and had no part nor lot in the pious joys of his Presbyterian family, nor ever seemed to suffer from this deprivation. He laid his hand upon me in punishment only twice in his life, and then not heavily, once for telling him a lie, which surprised me, and showed me how unsuspicious he was, for that was not my maiden effort. He punished me those two times only, and never any other member of the family at all. Yet every now and then he cuffed our harmless slave boy Lewis for trifling little blunders and awkwardnesses. My father had passed his life among the slaves from his cradle up, and his cuffings proceeded from the custom of the time, not from his nature. When I was 10 years old, I saw a man fling a lump of iron ore at a slave man in anger for merely doing something awkwardly, as if that were a crime. It bounded from the man's skull, and the man fell and never spoke again. He was dead in an hour. I knew the man had a right to kill his slave if he wanted to, and yet it seemed a pitiful thing and somehow wrong, though why wrong I was not deep enough to explain if I had been asked to do it. Nobody in the village approved of that murder, but of course no one said much about it. It is curious, the space annihilating power of thought for just one second all that goes to make the me in me was in a Missourian village on the other side of the globe, vividly seeing again these forgotten pictures of 50 years ago. 
and wholly unconscious of all things but just those. And in the next second, I was back in Bombay. And that kneeling native smitten cheek was not done tingling yet. Back to boyhood, 50 years. Back to age again, another 50. And a flight equal to the circumference of the globe, all in two seconds by the watch.